My name is Giselle. This is Slow Food Live. Slow Food Live is our way of bringing slow food into your home. And we are welcoming so many cool and talented people to teach us skills or teach us about the things that they know and research. And today, um, in partnership with Story Publishing, we are here with Kauri Becker, who is the author of Mochi Magic, the owner of the Mochi Shop, Kauri's Kitchen. And I am just going to turn it over to her to tell you more about herself and what she does and how she came to be the Mochi Magic expert. Kauri, thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to have you. I love mochi, so I'm really excited about the, the potential to make it at home. And we are grateful for your time and your energy. And I will turn it over to you from here. All right. Thank you, Giselle. And welcome, everybody. Um, I'm really excited to be showing you how to make mochi today. And I actually got um, a copy of my book in the mail yesterday, so I'll be showing that to you later. Really excited to see it after two years of hard work putting together the recipes and um, yeah, and working with the team there at Story. It's been really awesome. Um, so a little bit about myself. My name is Kauri Becker. My, uh, I'm half Japanese. My mother is from Fukushima, Japan, and that's why my name's Japanese, I guess. Um, Kaori means fragrance in Japanese. And um, I started making mochi about five years ago. And I started working with my mom, who's been making mochi for about 15 years. And she would make mochi for local events, um, bazaars, and things like that, just for friends and family. And she learned from her Japanese friends. And so when I was in college, she sent me a mochi recipe, and that's kind of all how this magic started. Um, I started, at the time I was in Columbus, Ohio. My husband and I have moved back and forth from the Bay Area to Columbus, Ohio about two or three times. And um, she sent me the recipe, and at the, at the moment, it was uh, 2000, I'm trying to get my date straight, 2016 or something, I was in grad school to become an English teacher, high school English teacher. Um, but at the same time, I started interning at a cooking school called the Season Farmhouse in Columbus, Ohio. And that, after interning there, I was really inspired to become a culinary instructor because I saw that it was really fun to share your heritage and teach other people, combine my passion for cooking with my passion for teaching. And so my mom shared this mochi recipe with me, and I decided to start doing Japanese classes at the Season Farmhouse. So I started doing uh, a mochi class, a ramen class um, at Franklin Park Conservatory, which is a conservatory here in Columbus, Ohio. And then in 2016, August, I moved to the Bay Area, Northern California, where I'm originally from. And we, my husband and I lived with my parents, and we had our baby, uh, our daughter there. And at the same time, I decided I had taught um, English in high school for a year. And I decided I actually wanted to switch gears entirely and go with the culinary instructor thing and teach classes full time. So I launched directly in California starting Carrie's Kitchen. And at first I started teaching at private schools. Actually, the private school um, I went to from preschool to eighth grade, I started teaching a cooking club there. So twice a week, I'd come in and we'd teach classes for um, kids from second grade to eighth grade. And then I also was at a local Catholic school doing the same thing. And then eventually, I got into Airbnb experiences. We started teaching mochi classes on there, and our class got really popular. A lot of people wanted to learn how to make mochi. And this whole time, I've been working with my mother, Yukiko, because we were living together and we were bringing all our supplies and we started doing team building in San Francisco for tech companies and just everywhere we started uh, doing private classes and Airbnb experiences, all these things were happening from 2016 to 2019. And around that time, uh, about 2017 or 2018, I met Leslie Jonath, who is my book agent. And she was inspired by the mochi, uh, an idea for a mochi book, which had been brewing in my head uh, ever since I started teaching classes and I was just, I just felt like there wasn't a mochi book on the market that was um, super detailed and had step-by-step -step photos. A lot of 
there are uh, some mochi books on the market right now, but a lot of them are just um, in writing and there's not many photos. And mochi is something you really need to get hands on with because if you just see a recipe, it's really hard to know how to form the mochi and put the filling inside and pinch it up and then, you know, make it look pretty because it, it takes some practice. So I felt like we needed a mochi book on the market and we needed something that people can really learn how to make mochi the traditional way and also in the very other unique ways like mochi donuts, mochi waffles, mochi pancakes. And uh, a lot of people are getting really into mochi right now and made from rice. It's a little healthier than wheat and a lot of people are sensitive to wheat as well. So rice is a really great option. So yeah, that's how the book came to be and uh, Story picked it up. I'm really grateful to Story. They're a great publisher, worked with a wonderful team of photographers and art director, Carolyn. And uh, so now the book is here after about two years of photos and recipe testing and everything. And it's been a wonderful journey and I can't wait to share the book with you. It's gonna be out on November 24th, but you can actually pre-order it right now um and then get it at that time and we'll have so we're not ready with the pre-order perks yet so maybe you wait until you pre-order actually because we're going to have some wonderful perks um uh including some free uh another free mochi demo and um some additional videos that i've done behind the scenes of the recipes in the book so um with that i'm going to start getting into the recipe and we'll do some i'll whenever there's a pause in the cooking we'll do a q a and I can answer some of your questions. So, um, oh, and by the way, I'm back in Columbus, Ohio now. So we were in Columbus, Ohio. We moved to California for three years and then we moved back and then just had my second child, a uh, little baby boy. So he's about two months old and my daughter's three years old now. And in Columbus, I just recently started the mochi shop, which is um, mochi donuts. From scratch, we bake the donuts and we glaze them in different kinds of Japanese glazes like matcha, black sesame, and we've been at the farmer's market just three times now. So we're very early and new, but there's definitely been a buzz generated around the mochi donuts because there's no mochi products in Columbus right now um, like mochi donuts. So it's been a really fun adventure introducing people here in Columbus to the mochi, the mochi, um, culture, I guess, or the mochi cra craze. <laughs> so I'm going to get started. So we're going to make a basic mochi recipe. Um, this is a white mochi and we're going to be using the microwave. I'm going to plug in my phone really quick because I have to make sure it doesn't die during our video. So I'm going to do that really quick right here. Uh, let me just do that. Okay, good. We're, we're all good to go now. Okay. So yes, you can see me. So what we have here, this is a really key ingredient in all of the book. Mochiko is the main ingredient we're going to be using. And this is wheat rice flour. So basically there's different kinds of rice, right? We have sushi rice. There's also something called sweet rice or sticky rice. And it's a short grain Japanese rice that's glutinous. And glutinous doesn't mean it's filled with gluten. A lot of people think glutinous means gluten like the gluten in bread but actually glutinous just means sticky so when you cook this rice it becomes very sticky and that's where you get the stickiness of the mochi so this mochi co is glutinous rice grains or sweet rice grains that have been pulverized into a powder so that they're easy to use in cakes and pancakes and in making mochi steaming the mochi and this is made by Coda farms they are um, a farm of a uh, third or fourth generation farm in Los Angeles, near Los Angeles, that has been making this mochiko for many years. And the same family has been doing it, the Coda family. So it's very good. It's a very good product and very well made. And you can get this at any kind of Asian grocery store, but particularly Japanese and Korean I've seen will have it mostly because I think Koreans also use it for mochi or for making um, a part of the fermentation with the kimchi. I've used mochi also in there. 
<coughs> so not all Chinese grocery stores will have it or Asian grocery stores, but if you go to Korean, they will probably most definitely have it and Japanese will most definitely have it too. So I, yeah, so that's a note about that. You can also get it on Amazon for, it's a, uh, of course a bit more pricier on there, but if you don't wanna leave your house, you can also get it on Amazon. So yeah, so we have our Mochiko. We also have, this is sweet red bean paste here. And this you can also buy at a uh, Japanese or Chinese grocery store. There's many kinds of sweet red bean paste. I don't suggest getting the ones in the cans because those are usually the whole beans. And I've gotten like the paste in a can, but it, the flavor wasn't so good. So I usually get, um, I'll just show you really quick. You can't really, you can't really see it anymore because I broke through the package, but this is the bottom half of it. It's a, it's a bag. It's in the refrigerated section, even though it's not, doesn't have to be refrigerated, but it's a bag of bean paste and there, you can get it smooth bean paste or you can get coarse bean paste. And this is sweet red bean paste ready to go, ready to use in your mochi. So it's really easy that way to make mochi. Okay. So we have our bean paste and then just we have our cornstarch here. I have cornstarch. You can also use katakuriko, which is Japanese potato starch. But cornstarch is readily available, easy to use. So I'm just using that today. And I put the mochiko already pre-measured in a bowl and also sugar. So for this demo, you want to have one cup of mochiko. So you can pre-measure that in a bowl now if you want or just add it while I'm doing it. So one cup of mochiko, one half cup of sugar, and one cup of water. So whenever you make mochi, um, pretty much any recipe for traditional mochi, the mochiko and the water ratio are gonna be the same, and the sugar is gonna be half of that. So um, anytime you're doubling the recipe, like doing maybe two cups of mochiko, two cups of water, and one cup of sugar. So it's a pretty simple ratio. You can multiply it. And um, yeah, we do that pretty frequently. And we're gonna be using a microwave today. If you don't have a microwave, you can do it on the stove top. So I'll be talking about that too. Okay, so we're gonna get started here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add my one cup of mochiko into my bowl here. One cup of mochiko. Then I'm gonna add the half cup of sugar. And um, I've actually done it with one third cup of sugar because I don't like it too sweet. So you can do one third cup of sugar too. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up. And I'll be answering questions in a second after we start the microwaving. Okay, I mixed up the mochiko and the sugar in here. And now I'm gonna add the water. That's one cup of water, the same amount as the mochiko. So one cup of water. And I'm gonna mix it with a whisk here. All right. So your batter should start to look pretty smooth. Um, doesn't take much mixing at all. So it's looking smooth already. There's no bumps in here. And I'm gonna set this aside. And now we're going to be microwaving this for two minutes in the microwave on high, or um, get your pan and go to um, medium heat and for a uh, nonstick pan, nonstick um, like a saucepan. And you can put that on medium heat and put your mixture in there and continuously stir it while we do this microwave process. So we're gonna do two minutes first. So I'll go ahead and put it in the microwave. Okay, so while it's microwaving, uh, let, yeah, just I'll be mine. Um, yeah, yeah. So far, so good. So a couple of questions. Um, can arrowroot be used in place of cornstarch? I really, we haven't gotten to the cornstarch step yet, but. Um, and then the second question from Jean is, does it matter what type of sugar you use? Mm, yeah, so I, as long as arrowroot is the same uh, kind of starchy consistency as cornstarch, I feel like it's you could probably use it. Um, and if air, as long as it doesn't have like a really strong taste to it, because you don't want it to, to influence the taste of the mochi too much. And in terms of sugar, I like to use white sugar because it doesn't 
paint the color of the mochi. If you were to use like um, coconut sugar or brown sugar, it's going to turn the mochi a brown color. So if you're, for example, making a, a chocolate mochi, then maybe you could just use coconut sugar instead because um, you're going to put cocoa powder in anyway. So you won't worry about the flavor. But for a white mochi, the basic one, I would stick with the white sugar. Perfect. And, oh, I've done it also with like an um, uh, artificial sweetener or like monk fruit. And I think you can, that's fine too. You can use that. Great. Um, and uh, this is a fun question from Jay. Does the book go into savory mochi? Do you ever do you also make them sweet or do you do savories as well? Yeah, so in the book, there are three savory recipes. There is a, uh, maybe I can, should I get the book now? And yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there is a, mo a traditional mochi soup called ozoni, and it's a light um, uh, chicken stock with uh, soy sauce and dashi, which is like a um, fish flakes. But there's also a vegan version you can do with, I think it's noted in the book as well. I'm trying to find the, yeah, here's a picture of the soup. So this is the soup here. So with this kind of soup, you um, actually do, you would have to cook the glutinous rice grains from scratch, which is really easy in a rice cooker. And then you pound it, um, either using a mallet or putting it into a KitchenAid and pounding it with the, um, one, the paddle paddle in the kitchen. And that's why this kind of mochi doesn't have any um, sweetness to it. So you can put it in the soup and it tastes really good. It has a really stretchy texture. And then we have bacon wrap mochi with uh, teriyaki glaze, which is really good too. <laughs> and then um, we also have, oh, so we also have just like um, the plain mochi again. But you toast it in the toaster oven, it gets all nice and puffy and crunchy and melty on the inside. And then you put a, um, a soy sauce glaze on top. Yum. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, the two minutes are up, so is it okay if I just yeah. you know, and then we'll go back and because I have to microwave it two more minutes after this again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take it out of the microwave. Oh, you might want to use gloves. It gets really, really hot. So there's something interesting that happens with this. Um, I want to show you, actually, because it's really important to know this part. So I don't know. You can probably see it from here, but the, um, the outside is a little more like translucent and the inside is more opaque. This is because the outside has cooked, um, the mochi has cooked on the outside, but the inside it hasn't cooked yet. That's why it's a little more pasty. And this is why we have to thoroughly stir it after two minutes, because we wanna make sure it's evenly cooked. So I like to use a rice paddle because it's just easier, but you can use a spatula or a spoon and just going to stir this until it's completely the same consistency all around. Because it's going to be like, yeah, you'll see while you're doing it, it's kind of a lumpy consistency. So we want to make sure it's pretty consistent. Okay. Becoming more consistent in texture now. Oh, and if you're doing this on the stovetop, you just keep stirring the mochi on the stovetop. You can't let it cook on its own because it's going to start burning. So you just have to keep constantly stirring it. Okay, so it's starting to become stickier now. And now we're going to do another two minutes in the microwave because some of the mochi's cooked, but some of it's not. So we have to thoroughly cook it. So another two minutes on high. We're going to do that. Okay, so let me go put in the microwave again. All right. 
Now we can take a few more questions. Great. We don't have any in the Q&A, but I have a couple questions, which is, um, I am excited about the idea of a mochi donut and wish I was in Columbus and could come try one. But how did you come to the idea of making it a donut? And is it is it the dough that the word mochi refers to so that you can kind of, you know, make a mochi donut or a mochi pancake, like you mentioned, is it really the dough that we call mochi? Or, you know, is it the classic kind of sphere filled with something? And you're just sort of being creative about it. You know, what is mochi referring to? Yeah, so uh, the mochi donut we use a donut baking pan, you know, the kind that you can buy um, with the mold, the donut molds in it. And um, there's actually two different kinds of mochi donuts. There's the kind that's fried. If you've seen the, the five little balls in a circle, it's, they call it pon de ring. Um, that's the fried mochi donut. And then the kind that we are making at the mochi shop is baked mochi donuts. So um, yeah, and then the mochi donuts we use mochi ko and eggs, um, some milk, sugar, um, and that, so it has a slightly chewy consistency, but it's still, it's kind of like a cake donut. It's springy and moist and has the mochi consistency. Excellent. Okay, yeah. we have a few more questions in here. Um, Jean asked, to, um, on the stove top, you stir until the desired consistency. I think you said medium heat, or do we want that on low heat? And it sounds like you just want to keep stirring it the whole time it's on the stove top. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's right. So with the microwave, you can kind of pause, let it heat up, and then stir it in between. But with the stove top, you got to consistently just keep stirring it with the paddle because um, otherwise it's going to burn. And you want it to get consistently cooked all around. Great. And that's medium heat or low heat on the stove top? I would say medium heat is good. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, the mochi's ready, so I'm going to take it out now. Sounds good. Ouch. It's really hot. <laughs> so make sure you use gloves actually. The second time around, it gets very hot. So I guess I'll show it again on the camera because the consistency has changed for sure. So yes, if you stir it, you'll see that it's definitely become a lot stickier all around and a lot denser in a way. It's, it's a lot stickier now. So we want to give it a nice stir to make sure it's evenly cooked and evenly consistent. Looking good. Okay, gonna, and the more you stir it, the more soft the mochi is going to get. So you don't want to skip the stirring part because that really helps with the making sure the mochi feels nice and soft. And if it ever looks too dry at this point, you can just add a little bit of water and keep stirring it. Maybe like a tablespoon of water. Okay, so this is done. So the mochi is pretty much cooked now, which is crazy because it only took about four minutes. Um, so, yeah, so we are going to be dusting our, our um, cutting board with some cornstarch now or whatever starch you're using. I recommend cornstarch or rice, um, not rice starch, um, the potato starch, Japanese potato starch. So we're doing this and this is gonna help us to keep the mochi from sticking on the board because mochi is so sticky that the starch really helps us to be able to form the mochi without getting burnt. You know, it's really hot right now. So what we're gonna be doing, putting the mochi directly onto that um, cornstarch that you spread out with your fingers. Okay, so right now it's just a blob of mochi. Oh, and a quick tip, this is really stuck onto the bowl, but if you soak it in water right now, um, it'll be easier to wash off. 
So I always soak the bowl in water in the sink. Okay, so right now the mochi is really, really hot, so it could burn you. So you can um, wait a few minutes or um, put a lot of starch on your hands. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flip the mochi over because we want to cover everything in starch. If, if the, the hot, sticky mochi touches our hands without starch on it, we're just going to get burnt and it's going to stick to our hands and we won't be able to form it. So flip it over so that everything's covered in starch and then start to kind of lengthen it into a log like I'm doing here. So we want like a two inch log, two inch wide log. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is I'll put this again so I can show you the top down view. Okay, so we're gonna put this here and we're gonna Put this down here. Okay, sorry, it's a little bit diagonal, but hopefully you can see. It. So we have our log here of mochi. What I'm going to do, I'll just split the log in half. And make sure your hands are always starchy because otherwise they're going to get burnt. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, if you're a right handed person like me, you're going to take your left hand. And this is the motion we're going to be doing. So pinching, pinching by putting our index finger and our thumb together. So I'm going to grab the mochi with my right hand, grab the, and then pinch it with my left hand. And that's how we get the piece of mochi off. So I'm going to do that again. So we have three pieces of mochi here. And then I'm going to do it with the rest of it. So pinching, it's pinching and pulling at the same time. Pinching and pulling. So yeah, right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. No, we have seven pieces. That's typically how much I make with a, one cup of mochi ko. So we have seven pieces of mochi now. And what we're gonna do next, we're gonna give them a little flattening. They are still very hot right now, so I, I would be careful, but um, make sure your hands are nice and starched. Give them a little bit of flattening here. Right now they're really, really hot, so I'm going to let them cool for about two minutes or so. Um, I also have, if you don't like red bean paste, there's also Nutella right here. And if you notice, this Nutella is almost a peanut butter consistency. And that's actually because I refrigerated the Nutella um, for about three hours or so. And now it's no longer that goopy or that really melty li liquidy kind of texture. It's turned into peanut butter. So it, the peanut butter texture. So it's really easy now to scoop it out and put it in your mochi. So that's a little trick and tip that we've learned over the years. Refrigerate your Nutella before you make your mochi. Okay, so, and um, one other thing we wanna do is cut our strawberries. So I'm gonna show you how to make two kinds of strawberry mochi. So um, go ahead and take a medium sized strawberry and cut the bottom of it off, cut the stem off. And you can do that for two, two strawberries. And for the next one, for the other type of strawberry, um, just cut a cross section of the strawberry off. So about a half inch wide um, cross section. I normally just take a strawberry and cut it right horizontally to get the, the two cross sections here. Okay, and those are the two that we're gonna use to show you how to make it. Okay, while well, it's cooling a little more, do we have any more questions or are we pretty good? Um, one, one question is how to know when it's done on the stove top. I think we're looking for that consistency that you, you were showing us, but maybe how does, how does that feel? How should it feel on the stove top to know that it's done? Yeah, so it should look a, more translucent or more glossy than it did beforehand. So it should turn more of a translucent color and be really, really sticky um, and thick and kind of dense. It shouldn't, um, yeah, so it should be sticking to the, to the spoon, whatever you're stirring it with. And then Sharon is wondering if you do ice cream mochi. 
Yeah, so in the book, there's also ice cream mochi recipe. And basically, it's a similar, it's the same recipe, except we roll the mochi, instead of parceling out in pieces like this, we actually take the whole mound and we put cornstarch all over the top and the bottom of it and we roll it with a rolling pin, super thin, like maybe an eighth of an inch. And then I like to use a four inch wide cookie cutter and cut, cut the circles out of the, from the mochi. Gotcha. Yeah, so there's a picture. And Anna is wondering, she says yours looks more white and smooth than hers and her, that hers is a little bit wrinkled is that an issue um it should be okay um yeah like like i said before it it takes a lot of practice so it de doesn't look perfect the first time that's very normal and a lot of times when we teach the classes people are like oh yours looks better than mine um but it just kind of takes a little practice but um if it's wrinkly you can use the other side. Uh, I'll show you that because we actually hide the ugly side and we show the, the more pretty side. Um, so I'll show you that while we're filling it. Perfect. And then yeah. someone's asking about the size of each piece. Like it looks like they're maybe about a couple inches wide. Is that about right? Yeah, I would say about um, three inches wide or so, two and a half or three inches wide. It's really hard to get each piece the same size because you just have to, it's like eyeballing it. Right. I mean, if you want to get really particular, you can use a gram scale and make them all the same weight, but. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a good trick to, to first take your log and then pitch it in half and then go from there instead of kind of trying to piece them all from that one log. So I think mm. that's a good recommendation. Um, yeah. Great. And then Denise also has some wrinkly dough, but we'll get more practice and then look at how you kind of cover the, the less pretty side there. Um, yeah. That's it for our questions for now. Okay, awesome. Oh yeah, and if you're doing the stovetop mochi, make sure you um, go ahead and do the, yeah, the parts that we, we just did with covering in starch and parceling it out. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna go back to the, downward view because I, yeah, it's important to see that. So what we're gonna do is, um, first we're gonna do the cross-section strawberry method. So I'm gonna take my mochi piece here. And this is where you wanna, if there's a wrinkly side, make sure it's facing up right now because it'll be hidden. So if you have a smoother side and a more wrinkly side, the smoother side should be touching the board and the wrinkly side should be up. So we're gonna put our cross section right here of the strawberry, right in the middle of the mochi. And we're gonna get about a, maybe like a teaspoon of the red, red bean here. And I just put starch on my fingers and rolled the red bean into like a circle. So the starch really helps to keep things less sticky. And I'm gonna push the starch or the red bean right on top of the strawberry into like a disc shape like that. Okay, so I have it like this right now. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be pinching the mochi. So we're gonna pinch at the top here. See. So now you kind of have like a little taco. And then I'm gonna pinch the other two sides up top too. So now it looks like a little parcel thing. And then we're gonna pinch all of the the parts to the middle. So we're really trying to seal it really well. Make sure you use a lot of starch. If it starts sticking to your fingers, you really want to put starch on it. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over. And this is where you see the prettier side. Oops, yeah, can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. So we're gonna flip it over and round it out here. And then we have our mochi right here, ready to eat. I like to let it cool down a little bit. So I'm gonna do that again, but this time I'll do it with the Nutella. So I'm gonna take this mochi, I'm gonna put the cross section in the middle, and this time I'm gonna get some Nutella. So Nutella is a little more goopy, so I'm not gonna roll it into a ball. This is just, is not gonna do that. I'm, I'll use two spoons to do this part because 
looks pretty goopy. Okay, so I'm putting some Nutella on top. And you can use a little starch on your finger and just pat that Nutella down. With the starch, it should pat down easily on top of the, on top of the strawberry. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull out the sides, pinch up top really hard so it seals. Turn it, pull the other sides, pinch on top really hard. Now we're pinching everything towards the middle. Sealing it really, really well with lots of starch. The Nutella one you want to seal really well because the Nutella melts, so it'll seep out of the bottom of your mochi if you don't pinch it really hard. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over and round it out. Very nice, okay? And so we're going to transition now to our whole strawberry method. So you're going to take your whole strawberry. And what we're going to do is actually cover it in red bean. So I'm going to take a little more red bean this time, maybe about a tablespoon, and push it onto the top of the strawberry. So we're trying to cover the whole strawberry right now. Use a little starch on your finger if it gets too sticky. So I noticed a little more needs to go on this part of the strawberry. So I want to cover the whole strawberry so I can't even see the strawberry anymore. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a, a mochi piece and I'm actually going to, I'm not gonna put it in like this. I'm actually going to invert it, put it upside down so I can see the bottom of the strawberry now. And let me stretch this mochi out a little bit so it can easily go over the top. This one's a little harder because this is a big, tall piece of filling. So you really wanna stretch the sides, pinch up top again, stretch the sides, pinch up top, and then, like before, pinch everything towards the middle. Okay, make sure it's all sealed. Then turn it around. And this one's really pretty because I'll show you in a second, but you can cut it down the middle and it'll show the cross section of the strawberry. So I'm going to cut it now. Show you that. So I'm going to find the tip top of the strawberry. You can feel it right here. And then I'm going to cut it down the middle. And you can see it's a really pretty cross section now of the strawberry and the red bean, just like this. So that, that's a really pretty way to serve it. You could serve it like this if you want to now with the mochi. So either method is really nice. This one is pretty, the cross section, because you can see the pink color of the mochi through the top of the mochi right here. The pink, because we put the strawberry in there, um, you can see the pink color coming out the top. And this way is pretty too. So they're both really pretty. I would say this method is easier and you don't have to have as many strawberries because you can get two cross sections out of every strawberry. Um, and something I like to do is also use cupcake liners. If you're gonna, Use it for a party. So I'm going to grab some. So putting it in cupcake liner really just helps to make a nice presentation. And if you're bringing it to a potluck, it keeps the mochi separate so they don't bump into each other and get sticky. So it's a really nice way to do that. I even put this in here. And this little thing right here. Okay, and one more thing I want to show you is um, if you're making mochi with kids, you can actually get really creative. So something I like to have on hand is are these little um, eyeballs. And what you can do is actually put, you know, eyeballs on your mochi. It's really cute that way. Um, you can also put the eyeballs on the actual mochi right on top. And um, then you can also use edible color markers to draw on top of your mochi. So you can take like red marker and do a little smile on your mochi. 
Just like that. <laughs> so it's a great thing for Halloween if you want to make like a little monster monster mochis for Halloween or something. <clears throat> Uh, one thing I didn't mention also is having a pastry brush really helps if you want to brush the top of your mochi off. Some people like this um, kind of powdery look, but if you don't like it, you can totally brush your mochi off with a pastry brush. And um, So you can brush it off like this, and that'll allow you to see even more of a strawberry underneath of the mochi. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. So you can keep making your mochi now if you want to. Um, uh, I can talk about the book a little more, show some of the cool recipes that I'm really excited about. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, that's so fun. I love the, it's such a cool thing to do with kids. Um, I love that you make it extra fun with the eyeballs and the markers and, um, Honestly, I this this seems much more approachable than I thought it might be. It, it doesn't look as quite as challenging as I anticipated. So that is great. We do have a few questions. I, I think it would be wonderful to see some of the book. Um, but let's ask these questions real quick. Um, sure. One is: um, Are there other fruits you like to use in there? Strawberries are not in season, or you can't get it. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, we like to use, I like to use raspberries. You can use blueberries. Um, we like to use mango as well. Basically, any kind of fruit that's in season, you can use in, inside of the mochi, as long as you can cover it in red bean paste or, you know, um, I just like to cut it to the shape that easily fits inside the mochi. Yeah, and I was thinking about blueberries and thinking, oh, you I'm going to group those kind of carefully so that you can wrap them more easily. Perfect. Yeah. And then a question on the red bean paste. How long does it last in the fridge, you know, opened or unopened? It can last a super long time. If you, I would um, put it in an airtight container and it can last two weeks long. I mean, honestly, even longer, but I don't want to tell you longer because I don't want <laughs> to be liable for something. But um, you can also freeze it and it can last for several months. So it, it's uh, a very self-stable ingredient. Uh, that's great. That's a great tip. And then how about the mochi? Once the mochi is made, how would you store it if you wanted to eat some? Yeah. So usually um, we just leave it out at room temperature, actually, um, because if you refrigerate mochi, it'll get really hard. The mochi consistency will become, yeah, it won't be soft anymore. So refrigeration is the, probably the worst way to go. Um, leaving it at room temperature is the best way. However, with fruits, you want to eat it on the same day because the fruit will start to kind of get really juicy on the inside. It, um, so I would eat on the same day. But if you just do red bean paste without fruit, you can eat it on the next day too. It should be fine at room temperature in like an airtight container. Okay. And then um, we've actually also, oh yeah, go ahead. You would recommend just a day or two at room temperature? Not yeah, fruit. yeah. With the fruit, though, you want to keep it just one day. I would You would eat it in the same day. Yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine they would last long, honestly. <laughs> if you had a couple eaters in your house, I don't imagine they stick around for too long. Mm, um, yeah. Let's see. Joe is wondering what other fillings are traditional. And Denisa is wondering about adding matcha powder. Do you add the matcha powder to the dough, or is that a filling? Yeah, so you can actually, yeah, it's very versatile, which is the beauty of mochi. So you can, um, when we mix the mochiko and the sugar, that's when you would add the matcha um, with the dry ingredients, because uh, if you add it, once you add the water, it'll clump up as matcha can do when you, when you add it to wet ingredients. So um, for this particular recipe of one cup mochiko, I usually add one teaspoon of matcha. To flavor it. And then um, also on the inside, uh, after all the q and I want to show you a few of the recipes that are really creative and tasty. Um, there's matcha truffles that you can put on the inside that you can make and put on the inside and matcha cream cheese filling. And I have pictures of that. Here. Awesome. That sounds so good. <laughs> um, do you use coarse or smooth bean paste? Um, either one is fine, to be honest. I personally like the coarser texture because you can, it's just another textural element that I really like.
but um, to each his own. Great. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm saving a couple of these questions because I think they'll, they're likely in your book. Um, so I'm going to segue into that. Um, could you put could you put just the fruit in there or do you really want the Nutella or the paste in there to kind of hold it together? You can put just the fruit in, that's fine. Um, I find that um, it might need a little more sweetness or I like some kind of like, yeah, some kind of paste in there just to complete it. But people have eaten, yeah, they've done fine with just the fruit. Great. Yeah. And, and Let's see, um, can you color the mochi dough? I think how might you color the mochi dough? I know that matcha will probably make it green and cocoa powder will make it brown. Um, mm -hmm. Are there other elements you can use to make it other colors? Yeah, so um, you can use food coloring too, if you're down for that. There's also like, if you wanna make a pink mochi and you don't wanna use red food coloring, um, you can use like beetroot powder in there or like natural colorings. Um, yeah, powders look work really well, like matcha powder, but oftentimes I'll use like, even to make mochi a, a pretty pink color, I'll use like one drop of red food coloring and that'll make, that'll be enough just to make it pink. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. Excellent. Um, let's see, could you freeze the mochi and thaw it later? So you can with the ones aren't, that aren't fruit filled, like if you're just using red bean paste. We've experimented with this and you can actually freeze it in an airtight container and defrost it for a few hours on the day you want it and it'll taste exactly the same pretty much. Cool. <laughs> but and just then, refrigerate it. <laughs> don't refrigerate it, okay. This, yeah. is good, this is good to know. I, um, I think there's a few things that you kind of need to bypass the refrigerator because it does change the texture of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I missed how you store the mochi dough, can you store the mochi dough before you actually form the mochi? Is there a way to store the dough if you can't use it right away? Um, that's a little more tricky. I would say you should, ha you kind of have to use it right away because it does get hard. And once the dough starts to get hard, it gets harder to form the filling inside of each one. Right. So that's when you can kind of work sort of quick with that. Yeah. Okay. Make it when you want to eat it. <laughs> um, okay. And these couple questions, I'd love to take a look at your book and some of your favorite recipes in there. These pictures are fantastic. Um, so there's a couple questions about the ice cream mochi and how you would add it without it melting because the mochi dough is hot when you're going in there. And then um, Romy is asking about unfilled but flavored mochi, if, you know, how you go about doing that. So if you want to bust out that book and let's take a look at that or, or answer those questions um, while we do that. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just answer them while we're looking through the book. Perfect. I'm just going to wash my hands really quick because they're covered in mochi and starch. So. Great. <laughs> Fair enough. This brand new clean book. Um, Linda has asked about, about information about Slow Food Live coming afterwards. And yes, we will always follow up with all of you, everyone who's registered for the session. So even if you had to leave early or couldn't make it in the end, we will follow up with a recording of the session, a link to the recorded session, and all of the sort of related links and resources that you might want. Um, September is a very, very busy month for Slow Food USA, so I'm a little behind on those. Um, if you were in our last Slow Food Live session, that is coming as soon as possible, and then within a couple weeks, we'll get you all of the information and the recording of this session. Hey, sorry about that. This fan thing is quite moody. <laughs> Moving around. Okay. It's really helpful to be able to see the way you were forming the mochi with your hand. So I appreciate you tipping it down and <laughs> making it easier to see. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I, I, we've encountered that problem with uh, our cooking classes online, the team building and stuff. So we've learned how to adapt. <laughs> so this is okay. So I want to show you my, some of my favorite recipes. Oh, there's also a recipe in here for pounding mochi from scratch. So if you can see here, um, it's really easy to actually pound it because all you have to do is cook the sticky rice, which I can show you that too. So you just, you buy a bag of the um, whole grain sticky rice. So this is, this is not the powdered box that I just showed you. This is actually 
grains of rice, right? This is sticky rice in the grain form. And you buy that and you cook it in um, one to one ratio of rice to water and you cook it in the rice cooker. After it's done, you just put it in a bowl and you can get a mallet and you start pounding it. Or you can use your KitchenAid and use a paddle attachment and let that do the work. So it's actually a lot more easy than you think. Um, so that's one recipe. And then there's also steaming mochi. If you don't like microwaving, you can totally steam it. And okay, these are the ones I'm excited about. So there's the chocolate mochi in here. So this is like how to make your mochi chocolate, the mochi dough itself chocolate. And then there's, um, yeah, my favorite one is actually, oh yeah, the strawberry myth is on here that we talked about today, showing you how to make that. Oh, and this is um, matcha mochi on the outside with a cream cheese infused with matcha on the inside. It's a lot easier than you think. You mix cream cheese, sugar, and matcha, and you make a nice paste, and then you put in balls, and then you fill your mochi with it. That's a really good one. There's also black sesame cream cheese filling, which is really good, too. And um, then we have our chocolate truffle mochi. So you make chocolate truffles, and then you can put those in your mochi, and they get really gooey and melty with the warm mochi. It tastes really good. And then we have um, matcha truffle mochis too. There's a little small picture for that one. But the um, you mix matcha with white chocolate. You make a white chocolate truffle with matcha flavor. And then you can put that inside of your matcha mochi. Okay, and then we have a chapter on ice cream mochi too. And this is what I'm talking about with flattening the mochi and using a cookie cutter. So, and then, um, in terms of ice cream mochi, what, how to form it without it melting, you actually have to pre-scoop the mochi with an um, ice cream scooper and form it into balls with a plastic wrap, and then you freeze it ahead of time. So if you try to, pre if you try to scoop the ice cream while you're making the mochi, it's going to melt a lot. But pre-scooping it, freezing it overnight, that allows you to quickly put the ball of ice cream inside the mochi and wrap it around and then um, put it back in the freezer right away so that it won't start melting. We have a really nice picture of the ice cream mochi here. And um, yeah, so, and then there's a question about the baked mochi as well. And there's a recipe in here for coconut chichidango. And um, this is a baked recipe, so you basically mix mochiko flour with coconut milk, um, sugar, and uh, other ingredients listed here, and you bake it for about an hour. And then you get this really delicious, chewy, soft mochi that's already flavored, so you don't have to fill it. And you cut it into squares and eat it. And also in the book, there's a chocolate brownie mochi. So the same idea, except you use cocoa powder, and then you use chocolate chips as well. And so you get that already flavored mochi that's been baked. Um, something I made recently is pumpkin mochi. You can actually mix pumpkin puree and mochiko and uh, pumpkin spice and cinnamon and eggs and things like that and bake it and make a really chewy pumpkin cake. Yeah. I cannot wait to get my hands on that book. <laughs> so, those looking so fantastic. Um, a couple more questions. Remind us again when the book comes out. You said November? Yes, November 24th is when it comes out. Keep an eye on story publishing so you can pre-order and get this in your kitchen. Um, let's see, we have a couple other questions. The name of the book is Mochi Magic, and mm -hmm. again, it's published by Story Publishing. So I will send a link to the book in the follow-up email for sure. It's a couple times in the chat as well. Um, Cecilia is wondering if your pumpkin mochi is in the book. Um, and then we also have a question about how do you store the cream cheese filled mochi, which my expectation is it might be similar to storing the fruit mochi is just kind of want to eat it or not keep it for too long. Yeah, it's pretty much the same idea. You want to eat it on the same day. Great. Um, and then let's see. I'm just looking at this. 
And the ice cream mochi, I'm storing that. So how long can it stay frozen and do you thaw it before you serve it? Yeah, so um, you would store it in an airtight container and it can stay frozen for, you know, up to a few weeks, like three weeks. And then when you eat it, you want to thaw it for maybe like four minutes or so before you eat it. Perfect. Okay. And is that pumpkin mochi in your book? It's not in my book, but if you look at pumpkin mochi, you'll find a recipe online. Right. For sure. I think there's... My yeah. guess is there might be a recipe in the book that you could sort of adapt to the pumpkin. <laughs> yes, yeah, like the pump, the chocolate brownie mochi or the coconut mochi, you can adapt that, except use pumpkin puree. Awesome. Instead of, pump, instead of the coconut milk. Awesome. All right, well, we are on the hour, Kauri, and I want to respect your time. You are a small business owner and a mother and I'm sure a, a busy person. So we're so grateful for having you here today. I'm really excited to try to make mochi now. I'm really excited about your book. Please keep an eye out for the book coming out November 24th. Again, we'll put it, you know, you can keep up with Kauri on social media. We'll send links to all of that to look for Kauri's Kitchen and the Mochi Shop in Columbus. And when this book comes out, we will also shout it from the rooftops at Soho USA. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you to all of you for joining. Good luck with your mochi. If you're making thank you mochi, thing. Yeah. If you're making oh. mochi, tag Kauri. You know, put up a picture of it and tag Kauri and Soho USA so we can see how you did. <laughs> yeah, sure. please tag me on Kauri's Kitchen Instagram. Also, I want to know, um, if you pre-order the book now, I recommend pre-ordering it now before you forget. But if you pre-order it now, um, you will still get all the perks that come with it. You'll just have to email us after you get the book. So um, don't worry, you will get all the perks, the pre-ordering perks. So Excellent. I'm going to go do that now. I encourage everyone to do the same. I love that pre-order the book. It's um, a great way to get ahead of the game here. Kauri, once again, thank you so much for having Congratulations on your beautiful book. It's fantastic. Um, it's beautiful, and I do think it's one of a kind. Um, and so I think we're it's a, it's a gift to us all. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us today. We appreciate your time and energy, and good luck to everyone with your mochi. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a great day, everybody.